This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to a new season of the award-winning Adventures in Compliance, the podcast where we look at the Sherlock Holmes short stories, movies, novels, and related material from the angle of compliance. The casebook of Sherlock Holmes is the final set of 12 out of a total of 56 Sherlock Holmes short stories published by author Conan Doyle in the and these were published, of course, in the Strand Magazine between October 1921 and April 1927. The book, the books rather, uh, are two of the short stories, The Adventure of the Veiled Lodger and the Old Shuskum Old Place, were the last of the Sherlock Holmes works protected by copyright. Although some of the stories are comparable with earlier works, many people feel that this is a lesser offering of Holmes, to which I wholeheartedly disagree. I hope that you will join us for this exploration of the final collected works of Sherlock Holmes as we take a deep dive literally into business ethics, leadership, investigative strategies, pattern recognition, and perhaps even portending the use of AI and generative AI as a tool for the compliance professional. There are some great stories in here, and I know you will enjoy them, and I hope you will enjoy this season of Adventures in Compliance really as much as I've enjoyed reading the stories. If you've enjoyed this award-winning series or any of the Sherlock Holmes works, I hope you will subscribe or rate and review to this podcast series, Adventures in Compliance. This podcast series contains promotional material throughout the podcast. Today, investigative lessons from the adventure of the Marrows and Stone. We're going to have a quick word from our network sponsor, Ethico, then we'll be right back. If you're a compliance officer, middle managers are crucial in getting your programs from you to your frontline employees. But how do we activate those managers and get them on our side? Ethico's new Middle Manager Toolkit equips you with the skills needed to empower your managers, to promote a culture where ethical behavior thrives and employees feel empowered to speak up. Learn how to turn frontline managers into ethical leaders with our new white paper, Empowering Middle Managers as Ethics Champions. And did I mention you can get the whole toolkit for free? Head to ethico.com to download the full toolkit today. Also, if you are looking for something new and different for the upcoming Compliance Week celebration in November, check out The Compliance Kids. It's my three-book children's series on compliance and compliance professionals for children. But they make great gifts and great training tools for your employees. You can check it out on Amazon.com. We've linked to it in the show notes. The Adventures of the Marrows and Stone follows the footsteps of The Last Bow in being written in the third person, with Watson an active player in the drama as opposed to its narrator. Whether this is a better fate than that they initially laid down, who knows. But the tale was originally written as a screenplay, entitled The Crown Diamond, in which the doctor separate, scarcely appeared. Even here, he spends most of his story on an errand, but it's an important one, so he probably doesn't mind. But there are some other things to consider as well. When we, the reader, and often Watson, seem to expect every trick that Sherlock Holmes employed in every device that he has developed to be new, exciting, and utterly brilliant, sometimes the old boy can't averse to repeating himself. When he hears, for example, that an attempt would be made on his life that night, he has no hesitation into dragging out an old waxwork dummy that he popped up in the window or propped up in the adventure of the empty house and doing so for the same purpose. Holmes is in the midst of his most dangerous case ever, hot on the trail of the marrows and stone, a diamond stolen from the crown jewels of England, and its financial value is even at this point a staggering 100,000 pounds. This is nothing when compared to the prestige and importance of it within the royal regalia. Powerful politicians have visited and entertained him or entreated him to increase his efforts. He has unearthed every disguise in his repertoire, everybody from the unemployed laborer to the tired old lady. But the jewel return has eluded him. The jewel thief, however, has not. 
He is Count Civilis of the 136 Moorside Gardens, the very man whom Billy the Page is now announcing as a visitor. Neither is he a man who, at close quarters, is likely to be confused by a waxwork. Holmes is expecting to be shot through the window. The Count clearly has a more intimate fate in mind, as is evidenced by his companion, a boxer named Merton. Watson hurries the way back with a message for Scotland Yard and Holmes. But where is Holmes? The Count enters the room, spots the effigy, and is about to whack it with his cane when Holmes appears from another direction and greets the visitor. The Count is exasperation himself. Why, he demands to know, is Holmes having him followed by a multitude of dubious-looking characters. Holmes assures him that only one person is shadowing the Count's movement, and that person is Holmes himself, aided, of course, by his numerous and costumes. And as for why he is doing it, well, the answer should be obvious, because the Count is a jewel thief. This is where things fall down, as both men are armed, but neither draws his weapon. Holmes relies on his powers of persuasion, and the Count, having been smart enough to figure out how to steal one of the most precious and presumably safeguarded jewels in the world, relies on, well, nothing really. He simply sits with his boxer friend at home study, listening to the detective play violin in another room as they ponder the offer he has left them with, reveal the whereabouts and the jewel and go free, or remain silent and go to jail. Besides, the Whackworks sits impassively next to them, right up until the moment when the Count explains to his henchman that he has the diamond in his pocket, and he takes it out to show the man and is astonished when the Whackwork turns around and snatches it out of his hand. It was Holmes all along. And the violin they've been listening to was a gramophone recording. Watson returns with the police, and the Count and the boxer are arrested. Count Kentelmere, one of the political figures who doubted Holmes could ever crack the case, is forced to eat humble pie. And the whole thing dribbles out from there. So what are the internal investigative lessons you can learn from the adventure of the Marazin Stone? In the story, Holmes masterfully navigates an investigation of a valuable gem, and it offers some, I think, very key lessons for the compliance professional who may be conducting an internal investigation into potential compliance violations by employer or employees at your company. So what are some of the critical takeaways? Number one, use of creative investigative techniques. Here, Holmes employs a clever tactic by using a life-sized wax figure of himself to deceive his adversary, demonstrating the value of creative problem-solving in investigations. Compliance professionals may not need wax figures, but innovative strategies can help uncover the truth and flush out unethical behavior. For compliance professionals, thinking outside the box when traditional methods fail is a critical component of an overall compliance program and investigations. Using technology, indirect approaches, and creativity to gain insights into potential compliance violations. Two, managing adversarial situations with caution. Holmes is confronted by violent adversaries in this story. His careful navigation of these tense situations shows the importance of maintaining control and managing hostile parties during internal investigations. Always maintain your cool and maintain professionalism and caution when confronting individuals under investigations, especially when their reactions could escalate. Three, maintaining your focus on your objective. Holmes remains laser-focused on recovering the stolen gem and bringing the culprits to justice, even when faced with distractions and misdirection. For compliance professionals, staying on task and focusing on the root cause of the issue is vital. Stay objective and focus on the facts. Avoid being derailed by peripheral issues or emotional during your investigation. Four, gathering evidence discreetly. In this story, Holmes listens to critical information without revealing his presence, allowing him to collect necessary evidence without alerting the wrongdoers. Similarly, compliance professionals should conduct parts of their investigations discreetly, especially when dealing with high-stakes situations or sensitive information. For for the compliance professional, the lesson is discretion is key in some cases. Quiet observation and data gathering can yield better results over overt actions. Number five, 
handling key witnesses and participants. Holmes manages the key figures in this case with finesse, extracting the information he needs while maintaining the, his position of authority. Compliance officers must do the same when dealing with witnesses, informants, or suspects in a compliance investigation. For the compliance professional, the lesson is skillfully managing witness to, witnesses to ensure they provide accurate and complete information without th- feeling threatened or pressure. Number six, utilizing available resources efficiently. Here, Holmes leverages his resources, including his own reputation and even trickery and deception, to ensure the successful resolution of the case. Compliance professionals should make full use of internal and external resources, from legal counsel to forensic experts. For the compliance professional, you should know when to use your resources wisely and whether it's a legal teams, third-party consultants, or technological tools, each can add value to your investigation. Number seven, swift resolution and reporting. Here, Holmes resolves the case quickly and ensuring justice is served in a timely manner. For compliance professionals, acting swiftly when violations are uncovered helps prevent further damage and ensures the company meets its legal, regulatory, and compliance obligations. For the compliance professional, the lesson is prompt action and thorough reporting are essential once an investigation uncovers compliance violations. Delay can harm the organization and undermine your compliance program. Obviously, the new Department of Justice, or rather the 2024 update to the ECCP, the Department of Justice Whistleblower Financial Incentive Program, have compressed timeframes even further. And it may be that you have 120 days now for a resolution or, excuse me, uh, determining whether a violation's occurred and self-reporting. In the corporate world, that's almost the blink of an eye. And finally, collaboration. While Holmes operates independently, his work eventually leads to law enforcement intervention. Similarly, internal investigations sometimes necessitate necessitate involving external regulators or authorities, particularly around self-disclosure and how the regulators may want your investigation directed. So know when to bring in outside authorities and regulators, especially when the violation crosses into criminal or regulatory breach. By applying these lessons from the adventure of the Maris and Stone, compliance professionals can strengthen their approach to internal investigations. Sherlock Holmes' mastery of detail, strategy, and human psychology offers a valuable framework for uncovering the truth while maintaining ethical integrity and professionalism at all times. To the final collected works of Sherlock Holmes, the casebook of Sherlock Holmes. As I mentioned at the start of this podcast, Ethico is the Compliance Podcast Network sponsor. And their management toolkit is a great tool for you to use. It's available free. And check out the link in the show notes for more information on it. If you're a Holmes fan or you enjoy analogizing to compliance, leadership, and ethics, this is the podcast series for you. I hope you will take the opportunity to reread one or perhaps all of the short stories. They're short reads and a lot of fun. I'm going to be taking a deep dive into each one of them, looking at leadership lessons, ethical lessons, and or compliance lessons from each one. If you're a Sherlock Holmes aficionado like myself, I'd love to visit with you about some of your favorite stories and perhaps record a podcast or two with you on them. So please contact me. You can reach me through the website of the Compliance Podcast Network. Adventures in Compliance is a special production of the Compliance Podcast Network. And as I mentioned, we are sponsored this month by Ethico. So I hope you will uh, check out the Ethico white paper that's available through their special link on uh, that we put in the show notes that I mentioned earlier. This is Tom Fox. I'm greatly looking forward to the return of Sherlock Holmes. Join us next week when we take up the problem of Thor Bridge. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.